vampire, William Martin Murphy is the controversial figure at the centre of this week's Hidden History. Very welcome. Please uh, sit yourself down there. It's a question of the trade unions and the local management coming together. The company's been through hard times. It's been a good week. <laughs> <laughs> In an age where entrepreneurship is lauded and aspired to, Ireland's business magnates are often regarded as national heroes. Their ruthless single-mindedness is condoned, praised even. We value our industrial tigers, we heed their words. It is wrong. <laughs> Entrepreneurs may be the national treasures of modern Ireland, but it wasn't always this way. In the not too distant past, money makers and power brokers were seen as suspect, somehow less than Irish. I don't think there was a place of respect accorded to entrepreneurs in late 19th, early 20th century Ireland. There was a certain amount of begrudgery towards successful businessmen. Politicians and poets have been celebrated much more in Irish history than entrepreneurs. In the decades before independence, one man emerged as the outstanding Irish entrepreneur of his generation, a man who more than any other helped to shape public attitudes to business and wealth, both during his life and for decades after. He is a major experimental, almost, magnate, working in the Irish context. He had the Midas touch. Everything he got involved in seemed to make money. He was the richest and the most successful Irish Catholic capitalist of his generation. A Catholic who very much held his own amongst the Protestant businessmen of his day, and that was unusual. Of course, it aroused jealousy. A pioneer who believed in Ireland's potential to become an economic power, he built a business empire stretching from Europe to South America. He was responsible for, for building railways in the Gold Coast of West Africa, and he built tramways outside of Ireland and so on. He was a person that understood the need to globalise. The confidence in Irish business at the present time Murphy had that way ahead of his time. As the country's first press baron, he changed the face of Irish journalism and brought his power and influence to bear on the nationalist politics of the day. And yet, when he is remembered, it is not as a patriot or a pioneer, but rather as a ruthless enemy of the people, a monster, the ultimate Gumbine man. A reputation was created about him, giving the impression that he was something of a, a tyrant. He's been depicted as somebody who sort of fed on the, the blood of workers. A blood-sucking, capitalistic vampire. He's seen as the devil, you know, this horrible capitalist who fed off the poor of Dublin. This man's name, William Martin Murphy. I think if you were going to divide it into goodies and baddies, Murphy, in most, in most accounts, would certainly be on the side of the baddies. William Martin Murphy was born in Bantry in West Cork in 1845 at the start of the famine. Yet by birth and social class he was insulated from its effects. His father, Dennis Murphy, had quit farming to set up a small construction company. He was part of a new social class on the rise since Catholic emancipation, eager to acquire wealth and make its mark. 
His father actually built up the contracting business he had during the course of the famine. And his family were clearly survivors. They were people that did well during the bad years of the famine and did well afterwards. A church building boom in the years after the famine opened up opportunities for the Murphy family. Soon, they had begun to make money. At a time when industry was still largely in the hands of a Protestant minority, Dennis Murphy and his peers were the first of their kind. He's a member of a new Catholic